so coming to the last week's current affairs dokra metal craft you know dokra metal craft belong to west bengal okay of course why it is in the news it is gaining market so again we are i mean moving to the i mean traditional uh, say whatever you call maybe dolls or something like this one and you know this dokra uses the lost wax technique lost wax technique and you know and you know lost wax technique we are using from time immemorial even we have encountered many uh, toys or dolls or statues of course statues uh, in the in the excavations of uh, indus valley civilization so that we have to remember and it is one of uh, the i mean legacy to india by the ivc that is the lost wax system okay yes now next so two places are famous in west bengal bikna in bankura and dariyapur in bardhaman dokra is an ancient tradition of course i told you they will use the lost wax techniques lost wax casting technique okay now this sort of metal casting has been yes from time immemorial now it is having a great demand both in india and also outside yes that is with regard to the dokra and uh, many motifs especially dancing etc dokra horses elephants peacocks owls and religious image in images all are attracting the uh, uh, people's demand now sidbi when you come to the sidbi it is small industries development bank of india and it is promoted by our rbi and even it is also maintained by the reserve bank of india and it is in the developmental organizations of the rbi you know what is meant by developmental organization its aim is development to boost the economy now take the example of rbi why rbi will give the monetary policy with the aim of curbing inflation and to have a good economic growth both uh, consumers and producers should be happy yes so sidbi is a developmental institution okay of uh, rbi which is promoted by rbi till today it is in the control of the rbi now i mean earlier sidbi is supported only industries and sidbi is also a refinance agency refinance agency you know what is refinance agency the best example is nabard <coughs> national bank for agriculture and rural development it is a refinancing agency what nabard will do you know nabard will stresses on rural empowerment rural development and agriculture upliftment and all well being of the farmer starting from harvesting to the marketing so suppose if any bank extends loans to rural development projects or farmers then nabard will refinance that bank such that the bank will have more liquidity in the hand and even they can extend more support to farmers if they are having liquidity so it is a good example of the refinance uh, organization in the same way sidbi is also a refinancing i mean organization where if a banker gives loans to industries then banker will get uh, uh, reimbursement from the sidbi i mean in the form of loan at a lesser rate of interest it is how the banker will benefit and as soon as when the uh, when this borrower i mean gets the uh, Uh, i mean loan from sidbi through bank even he will have a rebate on the interest rate suppose earlier he has taken the loan at a loan at rate of uh, say 13% interest when this banker moves his file to the sidbi 
if should be sanctioned the amount then this person's uh, i mean rate of interest will be reduced why i mean should be will give at a far lesser rate its aim is to boost the industrial sector if a person gets the loan at uh, i mean less interest rate automatically its profit will increase his profit will increase when the company's profit will increase what is the i mean what is the uh, i mean result they will involve in the capital expenditure what you call it as the capex when company involves in the capex automatically employment opportunity will also increase that is with regard to the said i mean said be's original function now even should be is lending loan to the microfinance institutions when you come to the microfinance institutions they will work at grassroots level even they will extend the financial assistance of 5000 rupees also very small loans are i mean given by this microfinance institutions so now should be wanted to refinance or give loans to the microfinance institution such that they will lend more and more money and you know um, there are many microfinance companies in india i mean running into thousands which are working at uh, the village level with the aim of uh, financial inclusion of the rural people along with the i mean extending loans this microfinance institutions will also sell instruments like uh, insurance policies and even i mean they will also take deposits etc okay yes this is with regard to the i mean sidbi is new approach to lend money to the microfinance institutions so <sighs> center has appointed justice hemant gupta as chairperson of the ndiac so what is ndiac ndiac new delhi international arbitration center now you know what is the meaning of arbitration suppose two persons are fighting say two countries say for understanding india and pakistan earlier uh, when we were constructing a dam on the river jhelum some other country arbitrated between us and finally we have settled that issue that is the international arbitration so even you are having the um, cases with regard to the um, trade and commerce etc so though we see the name international even they will also involve in the domestic arbitration see why why this system why this system because the aim of the government is to strengthen the adr alternate dispute resolution adrs why you have to strengthen the adrs the routine courts like supreme court high court district court subdivisional courts and lower courts are filled with cases the ca the, the cases are piling up like anything so it is a need of the hour to see that everybody will get the justice in a stipulated time or in a fair manner because all these cases are not serious some may be serious some may not be serious so if you address cases through these adrs automatically the number of cases in our routine judicial system will decrease and such that uh, the judges can uh, um, deliver the judgments at a, a shorter time than the earlier time you are having lok adalat lok adalat is a best example of the adrs which works at all levels of the court yes it is with regard to the adrs now center has appointed justice hemant gupta as chairperson now it was set up through ndias act 2019 and is a seven member body you may get the question in the form of statement it is a five member body six member body seven member body it is a seven member body one chairman plus two eminent persons plus three ex officio members ceo and nominee from finance ministry ex officio means and part time member from trade body you are having many trade bodies like fiki and um, many organizations are there ndiac has been declared as institution of national importance no doubt in it it facilitated both domestic and international arbitration so recent amendment to ndisc act 
uh, India is renamed as India International Arbitration Center, will conduct international and domestic arbitration and any other forms of alternative dispute resolution. We call it as the ADR. And even in the economy also, we are having a concept called as ADRs. Yes, we shall also go to economy also. Why not? Earlier history was important. Earlier, earlier geography was important. Now economy is playing a key role. What is the full form of ADR in the economic perspective? Any online student, any person participating in live class can answer this uh, question. So it seems nobody, everybody forgot everything. American depository receipts. Through this mechanism, Indian shares, Indi Indian, sorry, the companies of Indian shares will be traded in the America, like your NASDAQ. NASDAQ, that is American uh, stock market indices. You are having NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P. And uh, if I am not wrong, if I am not wrong, Infosys is the first company to be traded. So subject to correction, if I am wrong. Okay. Yes, my dears. Now, freeing of EEZ. Now, what is EEZ? Exclusive economic zone. Suppose say this is the India. <laughs> Up to what extent? We are having the exclusive <coughs> exclusive economic <coughs> zone, 200 nautical miles. So earlier, our defense ministry and the space agencies have restricted, say, fishing or exploring the crude oil. Now they have freed almost all, more than 90% space. Now what is the benefit for us? Yes. Uh, we can harness more marine resources. It may include fishes and also crude oil, which is the need of the hour. Though we are switching over to the more clean energy, but all of a sudden, uh, it is not possible to change. Still, even, you know, more than 60% of India's electricity requirement is fulfilled by thermal plants, where they use the non-renewable uh, fossil fuels. Okay? Yes. Defense and Space Agencies release 99% of exclusive economic zones areas for oil exploration and production in order to promote energy security in the country. Will release over 40% of prohibited areas, help boost up oil production and reduce import dependence. And you know, crude oil constitute, if I am not wrong, largest, largest commodity. Yes. You know, just Hyderabad city will get 1 lakh vehicles every month. 1 lakh vehicles every month. And after one year, I mean 12 lakh vehicles. I don't know where the 12 lakh vehicles will be parked or where they will move in spite of uh, Hyderabad having uh, metro, etc., MMTS, etc. Now, then coming to... Um, <coughs> Yes, about EZ, just now I told you, the exclusive economic zone comprises an area which extends from the end of territorial water to 200 nautical miles. End of territorial waters to 200 nautical miles. That is after 12 nautical miles. Our territorial waters is 12 nautical miles. Now, in all, in all India, EZ is about 2.36 million square kilometers. Okay, at least you remember the extent. And if you are uh, able to remember area also, it is well and good. Now, so when you come to the Wagir, it is a fifth scorpion class submarine which has been built indigenously by under Project 75 by Majagon Dock Shipping Builders. The other five submarines are Kalvari, Khanderi, 
கரஞ்ச் வேலா அண்ட் பக்ஷி அஃப்கோர்ஸ் வி ஆர் அண்டர் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் ஸோ ஜஸ்ட் தே மே ஆஸ்க் அபவுட் த வகீர் வாட் இஸ் வகீர் இட் இஸ் அபரன் அண்ட் அபவுட் ப்ராஜெக்ட் செவன்டி ஃபைவ் சரடி நைன்டீன் நைன்டி எயிட் இன்க்ளூட் த இண்டிஜினியஸ் கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் ஆஃப் சிக்ஸ் சிக்ஸ் அபரின்ஸ் ஆஃப் and the submarines are being constructed at mdl in uh, majagan rocket limited in mumbai in collaboration with the naval group of france yes try to remember france now setricham sangtham it is a name of a person don't think that it is a program or something other it is a name of the person who helped triple the incomes of 1200 marginalized farmers in eastern nagaland earlier he used to stay in uh, i mean new i mean new york he came to india and uh, he is his age is less than 40 years was awarded the first rohini nair prize for outstanding contribution to rural rural development his organization better life foundation focuses on rural livelihood security environmental sustainability and education for change and he encourages the farmers not to involve in slash and burn cultivation that is cutting the forest and if i am not wrong even nagaland has not uh, put an uh, put an end to shifting cultivation because they have no, i think they have not passed law halting that but this person encourages the farmers to not to involve in that he encourages farmers in the region to abandon wasteful slash burn cultivation and move to permanent farming he aided the farmers in marketing their products and promoting cooperative societies for this purpose and training young boys and girls folk uh, folk to divert their attention from the rampant hunting the um, uh, plagues the locality even he also encourages them not to involve in rampant hunting and you go for sustainable business or sustainable livelihood he had left his life in new york to come back to his home town in nagaland place does not matter for our achievement place does not matter for our achievement even a person living in america may achieve and even a person who is from village like anna hazare he belong to rolegaon siddhi and he and even he is not highly educated if i am not wrong he is a, a 10th pass person a great person yes the prize is given out annually to an individual 40 years or under age by the nayar foundation for social and economic purpose dr rohini nayar an eminent scholar economist and farmer advisor at the planning commission spent much of her professional life working on issues related to rural development in india she passed away in october 2021 and this is the he is the person who got that award so you can write i'm such kind of uh, i mean examples when you talk about the development of uh, the northeastern states or putting an end to the deforestation or putting an end to the uh, practices which are causing harm to the ecology okay now so curbing malnutrition in children of course in india uh, so we are having bad rank with regard to malnutrition especially among the children they are not up to the mark in weight and height based on their age we will disc- uh, we have discussed that that's calling it as the wasting and stunting so it is the initiative of delhi government here along with the academic the class teacher should make a note of the height and weight of the person periodically such that whether the person is getting balanced diet or not so to see that the children will get the desired calorie specific value or i mean desired balanced diet delhi government has initiated a program to have a snack break just before the lunch snack break like our students even few students will consume something even in the class also yes who knows yes okay curbing malnutrition in children school time tables will be restructured with a mini snack break to end of hours before the lunch break and uh, keep track of children with low body mass index by the class teachers see class teacher is just like the a mother because she or he will take care of every subject actually generally and uh, she she or he will prepare the I mean, progress report and they will call the parents 
saying that your ward or child is uh, weak in so and so subject to make appropriate arrangements okay actually it is a huge burden for them but still their contribution is a lot okay now instructing class teacher to maintain a regular record of the height and weight of each child in their class so schools have been instructed to create a weekly planner of cost effective health snacks that is very important take the example of millet chakki or millet energy bar it is cost effective no doubt in it and even peanuts even 20 peanuts so they will give the desired energy just 20 peanuts all our traditional snacks are healthy yes now even counseling sessions and uh, uh, and meetings with the uh, parents etc okay see fletter a new word for the a new leather made with flowers fletter okay see because now there is huge shortage of good leather and uh, the one reason is maybe the um, cattle um, and cattle population is not so highly increasing and even our utilization has highly increased because leather is used in the manufacture of pallets and upholstery and sofa sets etc etc and even it had its application in many industries also like agro based industries etc so a startup has manufactured leather by using the flowers which are found on the river ganga in two ways it is helpful see flower is good for one day no doubt in it second day when it falls in the river if it gets uh, i mean rotten then it will cause harm to the ecosystem there is no doubt in it now an indian startup has uh, found an unusual use for the tons of flowers which clog the ganges turning them into wagon leather it's called fleather and it's a new material being developed as a sustainable alternative to animal leather it is delicate and smooth to touch okay like flower made by a kanpur based startup called fool and you know kanpur is famous for the tanning industry and you know tanning industry involves usage of high chemicals now they are shifting to the items which are manufactured from the local herbs like astringent and even some trees will give the tannins okay yes <laughs> yeah this is the leather from these flowers this is manufactured just hmm, i am showing this such that you will have a idea now ayush swasthya yojana you know continuously we have discussed ayush and even we have discussed about uh, the world health organization opening its uh, center at jamnagar to undergo Uh, research and studies on the traditional indian indian medicine so in line with that and even um, even from a long period indian government is also encouraging the uh, i mean our traditional med medicine you know the full form of ayush ayurveda yoga yunani siddha homeopathy yeah so now central government is providing a financial assistance up to 10 crores to the institutions maybe maybe government institutions or uh, or private institution which are in the ayush sector to undergo r&d to have more advanced more advanced i mean disease uh, um, killing uh, or or what i mean to say uh, to involve in the r&d to have more advanced method of treating the diseases diseases or some ailments up to 10 crores like you are you see you are having many ayurvedic colleges homeopathic colleges they will have already some sort of infrastructure this kind of help will boost them to have the necessary infrastructure to undergo the r&d r&d is very important without r&d you cannot uh, move uh, move forward yes 
Ayushvarsya Yojana is run by the Ministry of Ayush. It is an umbrella scheme developed to roll out authentic classical Ayush intervention for promoting community health. It has two components, Ayush and Public Health and Center of Excellence. So for the Center of Excellence, 10 crores is given. Under the COE scheme, financial assistance is provided to the organization, institutions, etc. up to the 10 crore for a maximum period of the 3 years. The objective of the Center of Excellence Community of Ayush for the Union are under to support the establishment of advanced specialized Ayush medical health units in, in repeated Ayush and allopathic institutions, both in government and non governments. Even in the allopathic institutes, also, you can open a wing. Yes, now if you go to any government hospital, even there is an Ayurvedic doctor also. Not in all places, in few places. In Hyderabad, if you go to the Daru Salam, no, sorry, sorry, excuse me, not Daru Salam, Chaminar. By the side of Charnar, you are having a government Ayurvedic hospital. Darul Shifa, not Darul Salam. Darul Shifa or Shifa Kana. Okay? Yes. Yes. In, to support creative and innovative proposals for the establishment and upgradation of functions and facilities in their center, Sunday. Okay. Now, next is the social progress index for states and districts so on 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 various parameters i mean the ranking has been given by an agency social progress index states and districts of india prepared by the institute for competitiveness and social progress imperative was submitted to economic advisory council headed by the prime minister so accordingly the other states can take steps to increase their ranking even they will also give ranks for the districts also Assesses states and districts based on 12 components across their critical dimensions of social progress. See basic human needs, full shelter for things. Foundations of well-being, yes, education is must. And opportunity, the person should have the opportunity to go to the school or college, whatever may be the case. Based on SPS code, states and districts have been ranked under six tiers of social progress. Very high social progress, high social progress. Upper middle social progress, lower middle social progress, low social progress, very low social, of course, may be difficult to I mean, remember, but still the concept is very nice. The report also dwells on India's performance based on global social progress index and our rank is not good. One tenth out of 169 nations. But when you come to the purchasing I mean, capacity, we are having a rank less than five, third or fourth, if I am not wrong. Okay, in spite of gold soaring to 55,000, you can see the rush in the gold malls. All gold malls will have full tight uh, rush. Yes. And report findings. Puducherry has the highest uh, social progress index score of 65.99 in the country. Attributable to its remarkable performance across components like personal freedom and choice, shelter and water and sanitation. Even Amartya Kumar Sen also stressed on, on this kind of activities. He said that why Kerala is having good rank? For that he said that they have taken much uh, uh, action towards health and the education. Unlike the other states uh, which are always involved in the populistic measures. And Lakshadweep and Goa closely follow it with scores of 65.89 and 65.53. Jharkhand and Bihar scored the lowest, 43.95 and 44.47. And even a recent survey by an agency in, in Jharkhand with regard to education revealed that the condition of education in Jharkhand is too bad. And even in the last mains class, we have discussed why the eastern states are not developing both in the terms of GDP and also in the social indices. So even the recent survey revealed that Jharkhand's condition is very poor in the education. Yes. Now, Aizwal, a district in Mizoram, Solan in Himachal Pradesh, and Simla, top three best performing districts. A for Aizwal, very easy to remember. And yes, yes, it is up to you. Now, Frontier Highway, you know, time and again we are facing skirmishes between. India and China, one thing. Second thing, 
there is a influx of illegal migrants into India. In, that is from, uh, I mean, maybe Bangladesh or maybe Myanmar. So this frontier highway will stop such kind of activities. They will stop the illegal um, migrants into India. Okay. India to build 1748 frontier highway near the India, Tibet, China, Myanmar border in Arunachal Pradesh by 2027. The two-lane highway NS 913 will aim to stop infiltration in the border areas and it will be built by the transport ministry. See, all the way. Since 2016, we are in that line. Bhutan, East Komeng, Upper Suban Sri, West Siang. Yes, totally. It is just running uh, parallel to the line of actual control. Okay? Yes. The highway will start from Bomdila and pass through Nafra, Turi and Monigang. It will pass through Jido. Jido is in Arunachal Pradesh. Bomdila Pass is also in Arunachal Pradesh. And through Bomdila Pass only, the Chinese entered India in 1960s. Yes. 60s or before that? Yes. Now, it will it would give a big boost to the easy movement of defense forces as well as equipment to the border. One thing. And the second thing is we can curb the illegal migrant. That is the need of the hour because the illegal migrants will cause a lot of uh, threat for our survival. Take the example of Assam. Assam and uh, other places where they face uh, I mean, a lot of threat from the I mean, uh, illegal migrants. Yes. Now, underutilization of funds. See, government will allocate the budget. Of course, few are corpus funds. They are non, uh, I mean, lapsable. Even after March 31st also, we can spend. But the thing is, we are not utilizing that funds. We have discussed, if, if I am not wrong, in the earlier classes, Shreyas. Of course, Shreya is absent today for our class. It is a women upliftment program, especially of the weaker sections. And even we are also having the Nirbhaya Fund, which aims the security of the women and girl. So that funds are not utilized by the agencies or the governments. As per the parliamentary committee, funds for schemes under the Shreya scheme have remained underutilized. In other news, the Indian Minister of Women and Child Development has told the Lok Sabha that 70% of the non-lapsable corpus Nirbhaya fund remained unutilized. So the successive agencies or governments are not interested to utilize that fund because they are not having the planning. One thing is plan. And the second thing is there should be some persons to work. So many people, they are not interested to work. Even, I mean, in spite of allocating the funds, they are not utilized. It is too bad. About Nirbhaya fund. It is a non-lapsable corpus fund of rupees 1,000 crores given by the center and utilized by states to ensure women's safety. Nodal Agency for the Administration of Funds, Department of Economic Affairs under the Ministry of Finance. Same. Now, so Manipur, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Tripura and Damana have not spent any money under the fund. Only four states have used the Nirbhaya fund for the Mahila Police Volunteer Scheme. Why not? See, they are ready to give the funds. Why you are not using? Now, Shreya, scholarship for higher education for young achievers scheme. It is central. It is a central federal scheme under the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment that provide financial assistance to students from SEs and other communities for pursuing education. It is proposed to be implemented during 2021, 22, 25, 26. Top class education for SEs, national overseas scholarship for SE students. National Fellowship for SCs, Free Coaching for SCs and OBC students. Yes, you have to give. And even my personal opinion is, all the government universities should have a wing to give coaching for them to appear in the competitive exams like RRB, Stock Selection Commission, Banking, UPSC, State Public Service Commission. Yes, the degree students should get that uh, kind of education also. What is wrong in that? Yes. Now, next in the news is Oran land. 
maybe two or three weeks ago we have discussed about the state bird of rajasthan what is the state bird of rajasthan gib great indian bustard okay so oran land is a land in rajasthan okay and it is having a unique biodiversity no doubt in it and the government categorized that oran land into waste land and permitted the usage of that land for the uh, establishment of wind power and also establishment of the solar power you know i mean, rajasthan is the ideal place for the solar and even it is said that and because of its location even there is continuous uh, blow of the winds so both uh, uh, encourage the players to involve in that so the people belonging to that region walked all the way and they have they have protested not to use these lands for other purposes like solar power or wind power uh, by which uh, they will lose their livelihood and even biodiversity will be harmed because they will have a series of uh, uh, lines high tension lines and this line that lines and uh, if any bird uh, strikes that you know what happens okay residents from around 40 villages of jaisalmer rajasthan have walked 205 kilometers to protect community conserved sacred spaces known as orans they are the biodiversity hotspots and now they are uh, categorized into wastelands and uh, permitted to to be used for other purposes the current categorization is causing loss of biodiversity and is affecting the livelihood of the locals in the area as huge chunks of land are being allotted for setting up of solar plants and wind power and you know they are the natural habitats and why why uh, why they are used for solar and wind power because they are the ideal places and and you are having many other regions uh, in that area which will have the same ecosystem they are called as rohida sorry important uh, biodiversity in this uh, in this orans is flowers like rohida borodi kumbhat and desi babul in large numbers unique unique ecosystem orans now so india pitching for enhanced development of biofuels even in the last class also we have discussed one of the most advanced bio I mean, ethanol plant is to be developed at Panipat. Accordingly, and even the government is also encouraging the sugar industries to involve in the manufacture of biodiesel. Why? We are blending with the HSD, and it is used accordingly. Okay. And even we have discussed first generation, second generation. Of course, once again we will discuss, and it is uh, excellent. And why we are showing uh, too much interest for this? Because we want to minimize the imports and even we want to minimize the emission of the greenhouse gases the traditional i mean fossil fuel will cause uh, harm to the i mean environment whereas this uh, i mean whereas this biodiesel is a eco friendly the article discusses biofuels india during its presidency g20 is emphasizing on international collaboration for energy security we have discussed many times now central public sector enterprises are setting up 2g ethanol bio refineries in the country at panipat we have discussed bachinda numaligarh barga on demolition tract in panipat actually here already we are having the i mean refineries of hpcl bpcl iocl i mean traditional refineries in the same place this is blended plant is different where the, where they can blend easily because the i mean one side crude oil plant i mean uh, It's very near biodiesel. They can blend it very easily. Bio fuels are liquid or gases fuels, primarily produced from biomass, and can and can be used like the fossil fuels. Crops used to make biofuels are generally either high in sugar, such as sugar cane, sugar beet, starch such as maize, yes, maize, and uh, and topiaca, or oil such as soya bean, rapeseed, coconut, sunflower. using coconut is uh, very difficult as they are costly but still we can now uh, by using maize we are uh, getting lot of biodiesel and uh, even from sugar cane also from molasses we are manufacturing that so try to remember categories of biofuels first generation biofuels are made from sugar starch vegetable oil or animal fats using conventional technology old technology second generation biofuels are produced from 
non food crops so if you go for this even there is no harm to the food security also uh, from non food crops such as cellulosic biofuels and waste biomass stacks of wheat and corn and wood third generation biofuels are produced from microorganisms like algae try to remember these three generations Indian efforts to promote biofuels. National policy on biofuels 2018. It aims to contribute blending rates of 20% ethanol and 5% biodiesel by 2030. Yes, already started. It also focused on using 2G technology, second generation technology. Earlier, only food crops. Now, non-food items. 2G technologies with agricultural industrial waste. See, we have discussed in the earlier classes. The Panipat biodiesel plant will use the stubble or stack which was burned by the farmers. And that was creating a lot of mess for the people of Delhi in the form of pollution. It is two-way benefit for us. One is already pollution will be reduced. And the second thing is the wastage we are converting into the money. And even the farmers' economic condition will also increase which is a need of the hour as we are already in the path to I mean, double the I mean, income of farmers. Okay? Yes. Now, I mean, ethanol blending petrol program, it aims to achieve ethanol blending in order to reduce pollution, conserve foreign exchange, and so on. And Pradhan Mantri G1, this sort of things you have to remember. Jaiv Indan, Vatavaran Anukul, Fasal Avashes Nivaran. Yojana launched in 2019 to create an ecosystem for commercial product developed and R&D in the 2G ethanol sector. So, not crops, food crops. Residues of the farmers, which is not consumed by the human beings. Gober, galvanizing organic bio-agro resources Dun scheme. It focuses on managing and converting farm animal dung and solid waste into useful compost, biogas and bio-CNG, thereby keeping villages clean and increasing rural household income. So you have to remember all these schemes whenever you are addressing the uh, energy security of India. In this way, we can strengthen our energy security. If not, all the time we have to import our, import the food oil. Now, Repurpose used cooking oil. It seems to, but generally it is not. It is not possible. Generally, in the real sense, repurpose used cooking oil. See, actually, you know, whenever you fry some items, there will be oil. But now, what we will do? We will use for other purpose. We will not uh, throw out. Suppose, um, and generally, what happens? The big hotels. They will use the oil only for, for one, only for frying only once. But what they will do, at the end of the day, they will sell that oil to some other person. That is second order hotels. Automatically, this person will purchase that. And even they may sell to the third order person who will, who will be selling the goods on the roadside. So generally, we may not get this, but even government is planning to handle that also. Repurpose used cooking oil. It aims to create an ecosystem that allows for the collection of collection and conversion of used cooking oil to biodiesel. Tough task is now already 160, 170, 140 is the average price of the cooking oil per kg. Then who will uh, throw it out? None, none. First they will fry and they will use the same oil for doing some other thing. Only. They will not throw outside. No doubt in it. Yes. So this is about uh, today's current affairs. Okay. Thank you and happy Christmas.